Korov. I'm Marcy Ingram, and we interviewed Bob, who dodged the draft during the Vietnam War. And this could give some helpful insight on how people felt about the draft during the time. This is Bob. Hey. So we're on right now? Okay, okay, we're on. Live. Okay, we're live. Okay. My experience with the draft happened in like 1970. When I turned 18, you know, I had to go down and sign up. Take a physical and all that stuff. I did all that. And uh, I was good to go. But in that year, they had the lottery system. It was kind of getting close to the end of the war. And uh, so they had the lottery system. So they put 365 dates in that date out, and since my date came out 23, about 365, I knew I was going, I wasn't going to die about it. So I went and I, I went to sign up for the, uh, I want to make my own choices, so I went to sign up for the uh, uh, aid, took some tests and stuff, and I've done really, really good. <laughs> and uh, I could have did some things, but I was on a lot of drugs at the time, because <laughs> it was 1970. And I was 18 years old. And I was very confused. That brings up a point. You know, to an 18 year old person, I mean, think about it for a minute. To an 18 year old person be asked and given a gun and sent to another country to kill somebody he doesn't know. I mean, it's pretty fucked up. I'm sorry. Asking me to do that. And I didn't have no choice but to go to the meeting. And it was the best. best of the situation at the time. But anyway, I ended up leaving and uh, I went to Florida and uh, kind of forgot about the draft, forgot about the whole situation. I just kind of let it go for a long time. And then uh, the FBI came in Miami and arrested me put me in jail. And uh, I was kind of in a drug rehabilitation center at the time. So again, should I have been going to the army? I was in a drug rehabilitation center. <laughs> but uh, because of the letters that were written and stuff between the place I was at and stuff, uh, uh, they sent me to see a psychiatrist. Serious as hell. And they sent me to take my physical over again, too. But they sent, when I got out of jail on my own recognizance, and I didn't stay in there for four years, and I had to go see the psychiatrist. He asked me a bunch of questions that I didn't really understand what they were all about. And we don't really have any time to go into that right now. It's pretty involved. But in the interim, Somehow, I finally got a letter from the United States government that said that I was uh, mentally <laughs> and physically, for some reason, I don't know. I passed my physical the first time, but the second time I felt it. But, uh, so anyway, so they said I was mentally and physically unfit for the United States Army. And I don't know exactly how that happened, but I felt you know, looking back on now, I, I'm thankful. I, I think it was the universe, you know, just watching out for me. I told you what kind of mental state I was in. I almost killed myself twice when I was like 17. I was supposed to go to an army and talk. So maybe they made a the right decision. It's a good thing. But, you know, over the years, I've looked back on it and I've met friends and talked to people. And I've had close friends that were friends of mine for 10 or 15 years and they went over there and had purple hearts and two or three different kind of medals and stuff, but I mean close friends, knew them for 10, 15, 20 years. They never talked to me about that. They didn't want to talk about that. They got medals for it. <laughs> okay, well thank you so much for having this interview with us. Okay. And thank you, Bob. You did a good job.